Hello everybody, my name is Saldun Vokte and in this video I'm going to show you how to properly fight as the Miragaya. At the time of this video, this creature is still rather new, so its combat style and combat potential are still being figured out. So if any of you guys figure out any better strategies than the ones I'm about to tell you, then do feel free to share them. In this video we'll be going over the arsenal of the creature and what type of abilities you should equip. After, I will then cover what type of subspecies you should choose to grow, its terrain compatibility, and of course, the fights you can find yourself in, and what you should do in case if you're fighting a lower tier, mid tier, or an apex. I will also be including a sure way to win regardless of what type of opponent you are fighting. Without further ado, let's begin right away! We have a new slot in the arsenal, a slot for passive abilities. In Miragaya's case, we have a new ability called Paralysis. This ability will grant a few debuffs to any attackers. The more the attacker attacks a Miragaya, the higher percentage the gouge will grow, and at 100%, the attacker will become paralyzed. Of course, taking those hits aren't easy for Miragaya either, so when your enemy does become paralyzed, it's better to just run away. Also, your attacker will not activate the passive skill if it doesn't hit your spikes. Fire abilities, we have the first projectile in the game, if you want to call spit projectile that is, of course. In any case, if you spit on your enemy, you will give them a damage reducing debuff. You can stack the effect of the spit up to two times, after which the opponent will become immune to any more spit attack. Now of course the range on this ability aren't really that great, you really need to get up close and personal for it to be useful. And just like me, I need a bit of a break between each shot, and the cooldown on this ability is around 1 minute. For sense abilities, we have 3 options, the first one are envenomation. Basically, you will lose a bit in your raw damage output, however, you will increase the damage in your venom or toxin abilities. Mudblock increases your healing in bleed, bone break, venom and poison, as long as you're a dirty little dinosaur. Yes you are! Spike Gathering increases your damage reflecting abilities depending on how many Stegosaurids there are in your group and within a certain range. For higher abilities we have three options, the first one are Muddy Scales. Basically by getting down and dirty you can get yourself some protection and save yourself from any future hassle. Oh but make sure that you're not in the splash zone, cause if you try to imitate your partner and get yourself a little bit wet, then you can kiss that protection goodbye and then in the near future you will receive more than just a headache. Also, do note if you have this ability and it's raining, then you are basically fucked. The second ability, Toxic Barbs, basically grants a little skull icon to your opponent's health bar. If their health drops below that skull, then they will become a skull. The last ability, Avina Moose Spinnies. Basically, all of your attacks get infused with venom attacks, meaning you can train them for their stamina. For leg abilities, we have three options. The first one, are Caked Up. I mean caked on. Basically, your dirty self will be able to indulge yourself a little bit longer even if you're wet. Then we have counter turn on. Basically, when somebody wants a piece of you, your movement becomes so much better. Of course, being the dirty dinosaur you are, you only get turned on when somebody wanna bite your ass. Then among these new stuff, we also got strong legs or whatever. Then for backlim, we have lash or what I like to call it, do a 180. Really good if you want to change your direction on a dime. For tail abilities, we have two slots and we have four options. The first one are detonate, which doesn't do its name any justice. I mean, all it does is turn venom or toxin into raw damage, but you know, I expected something a bit more explosive. I mean it does cause an AoE attack with its tail, but with a name like that I was kind of expecting a huge explosion. The second ability are tail attack, which does as it says. On the flip side, depending on what hide you got equipped, your tail attack can also either do venom damage or toxin damage. Furthermore, with directional attacks now being a thing, you might actually be able to hit your opponent this time. Tail barrage are basically tail attack times 3, though the cooldown are longer and the amount of toxin or venom being given to your opponents gets stacked with each hit. Tail swing are just a charge up attack that does as it sets depending on how long you charge it. 
When it comes to what abilities you should have equipped, then I would recommend those you see on screen. You see, Miragaya is stronger than a Kentrosaurus, but not as tough as a Stegosaurus. Just, you know, kinda in the middle of those two. And compared to Alto Dinosaur, it is actually kinda fragile. At least if you're going to play as a solo, then you are going to need the extra defense you can get from the mud. Otherwise, you might even fall to a higher class of low tiers like Ceratosaurus. If you are playing with a friend or with another Miragaya, then I would have one with Toxic Spike and the other one with Venom Spikes. As for why I've chosen this specific tail abilities, I will show you, but that is better covered in the actual fights. As for leg abilities, that's kinda simple, it's just the turn radius of Miragaya kinda sucks. When it comes to what subspecies you should choose to grow, I would recommend Stamina Recovery, especially if you are a solo player. This is due to the fact that 3 out of 4 of your tail attacks are stamina draining abilities. And like I said before, the Miragaya are surprisingly fragile, meaning that the moment it loses stamina, then it is pretty much just a sitting duck. Also, the health recovery on this thing are actually not too bad, and the spike damage are already good enough. Like you saw in the beginning, the Miragaya aren't too slow for a creature its size, and due to its low posture, it doesn't have too much problem getting through thick vegetation. Of course, with your speed, fighting in open areas aren't too much of a problem unless you're facing low tiers. Basically, you can fight anywhere, as long as it's not full of ups and down. Make a habit out of this, it doesn't matter what tier you're up against, always before a fight, make sure that your mud level are 100%. When it comes to fighting low tiers, things are rather simple, you can just overpower them. Since it's that easy, let's rather look on things you shouldn't do during a fight with a low tier. First of all, if you're going to use spit, make sure that you are within range. Secondly, if you don't have normal tail attack, then all of your tail attacks will consist of those that has longer cooldown. This will leave you vulnerable and open for counter attacks. Also, raptors will find it less than ideal pouncing on you, as they will receive a bunch of debuffs upon contact. For mid tiers, it's a whole nother story. Miragaya is no Stegosaurus. Without the buffs from the mud abilities, it will not tank hits very well. Even with all the debuffs it can give, it still finds itself outclassed, outmaneuvered, and outplayed by most mid tier. As of now, I think it's a bit too much for a low Miragaya to try and one be winning a mid tier. And if one be winning mid tiers was barely possible, then one be winning Apexes would be impossible. Sometimes it's better to just admit that some creatures are better off in groups. Again, I would like to hammer down the fact that at the time of this video, this creature came out just a few hours ago. Basically, the combat style and the combat strategies for this creature are still being figured out. So if you have any helpful tips, do feel free to share them, and support this channel. With that being said, I thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys later. Goodbye!